approximately two years ago, a whole bunch of truckers were arrested, had some of their accounts frozen in Ottawa because they were demonstrating, honking, but no one was prevented from going to their offices. Things are different today. We'll answer that in a second. But before that, I just want to thank everybody for contributing. And I write letters to those who give me their addresses. So please, keep the contributions coming so those guys can get paid. And give me your address so I can write a thank you note. Brian Lilly is a columnist with the Toronto Sun. And he has the answer to the question, what was the difference between two years ago and Saturday night when the Prime Minister of Canada and the Prime Minister of Italy and a bunch of cabinet ministers were prevented from attending a reception because there are a bunch of pro Hamas thugs outside spitting on them and causing a problem. Uh, because they're a pro Hamas, pro terrorist group as opposed to the Freedom Convoy. That is the only difference. That is the that only is difference. Stunning. Because when you think about it, when the convoy folks said, you know, they, they'd settled in in Ottawa and then a bunch said, we're going to Toronto. You know what downtown Toronto was like. Lockdown, can't get uh, uh, vehicles in. The, they, they did it beautifully, yeah. like they should have in Ottawa at the start. The, this time, they're doing nothing. And it's not just Saturday night, it's since October 7th. How many of these pro Hamas, and they're not pro Palestinian, they are pro Hamas marches, how many of them have gone outside of the law? Several. How many of them are glorifying terror groups? How many of them are protesting with their faces covered? Plenty. But no, this isn't even protesting. On, I saw the video on Saturday night, a woman smacked a cop. If you and I went out somewhere and hit a cop, we'd be in, properly in chains. And then you've got people like uh, Ahmed Hussain, the Minister of International Development, just back from Jordan and Egypt, very sympathetic to their cause. Yeah. He's being bullied and harassed. I believe things were thrown at him. You've got people being spat on. They're going to a dinner to celebrate Italian-Canadian links, and they're being called genocidal baby killers. So why... Why was that not prevented? It could have been, or they could have said, okay, you guys over there or get arrested. Bad planning by Toronto police. They didn't have barricades out. They didn't have the mounted unit ready to go. They did not plan properly. But you're not, pl you're not blaming the rank and file police. No, that's, that's why I'm calling for Chief Demkew to be fired. He has to resign or be fired. The man should, no one should have confidence in him to do the job. But maybe, maybe some politicians, and I know politicians don't ever tell the cops, how to do their job, but they do say, we don't want to have any conflict here. They can give them hints. So we don't know if it was a chief who was told, you know what, just let this thing go, or someone else was telling him. Yeah, or that, the prime minister who, arrest, who pulled the trigger in Ottawa for the truckers and didn't do anything here in Toronto. Well, look, at the end of the day, the RCMP said uh, the event's not going forward. And when you look at how Toronto police was doing their job or not doing their job, I'm not sure that I blame them. This is one where you're not going to get me to blame Justin Trudeau. But if he had, and Pat Gossage off air here is laughing about that one, if he had in advance brought in the Mounties and they had worked with the cops, this could have been prevented. And the reception for the Prime Minister of Italy would have gone on. Well, the RCMP works with the local police. The local police are in charge of outside and that's where the problem was. Beginning to end, Toronto Police Service, dem has got to go. I'll give you that one. Brian Lilly, three minutes. Thank you. This show provides independent analysis of the issues. We are not paid by the government. And as I am finding, so much business in Canada relies upon various governments that they don't want to sponsor or advertise on a show which may become controversial, which talks about liberty, freedoms, sometimes criticism government. I've had guests on that support the government. But people are saying, you know what? We don't want to bite the hand that feeds us, i.e. government. Which is why I hope you'll subscribe and contribute to keep this show on the air.